It started off friendly enough. Two politicians who belong to the same party sharing a meal before heading out. But all this friendliness would change the minute they hit the air in different helicopters, each getting a first-hand view of the extent of destruction and human encroachment in the mine. And once on the ground, the sentiments from the locals is nothing short of hostile. Clearly the situation here in Goben is very volatile. Land, very emotive issue here. These people don't feel safe. They have some of them have genuine titles, they say. But they say that their schools and their houses are being burned down and they don't know what to do. Kuna shida mingi hapa? Yes. Ha? Sana. Kama nyumba imejomewa baba yangu huko. Eh? Jana, jana. Kama baba yangu imejomewa nyumba huko. Sasa hii watu eh shida ni hii. Bwana kama ulekina anakuja anakutuambia tunachokosa nani? Tunachokosa nani? Hata hata si tunamwambia mapema atoke. Tulikuwa tunataka kueleza le dama. Le dama eh ajui mepia 1976. Ajui mepia 1980. Ajui mepia 1990. Le dama amekosea. Wakati juzi juzi imekatwa hii makurup letama alikuwa shule ajui katilai ajui serikali ameweka katilai na akaweka machane chai na akasema msipite sisi hatujapita kuna wengine wamepita lakini hakuna atoe hiyo hata sisi tutatoa kabla hawajaenda atoe hiyo nyumba hiyo hiyo tutatoa well in fact we were born here we were born here we, we, we know we know nowhere where where will we go now our parents I've been living here for some years, about a decade. And then now we are suffering. Where do you go? No, no, no. Where will you go? Nowhere. Mabe. But remember, we are not going to assist fictional. Sisi tunataka wana na match. So off we went in the back of this truck to see for ourselves the full extent of the destruction and encroachment. All around us was once forest. Now it's maize shamba after maize shamba. Na huku ni kwenu sasa? Na ni akina nani? Pande hii ndio yeah. nakwambia kuanzia hapa shamba hili linaelekea huko pande hiyo ni shamba serikali na, na mahindi ni nani na iko na mm. mahindi eh hizi mahindi mm. ni zile watu ambao walitolewa kwa sababu watu waliambiwa kwa sababu unajua ukweli mashamba hita stahili kupita hapo so watu wakatoka mahindi yao ikuwa the government has moved in and evicted many of those it says have settled here illegally so this is typical of what one of the dozens of houses which were destroyed, many of them burnt, that belong to the locals here. This one belonged to Robert Ruto, who says his family has been living here for many years. Ruto, si yuko ni kwako? Ilikuwa yako? Ilikuwa yako. Nani alikuja akachoma? Askari alikuja akatuvamia hapa, akatuambia tutoke. Sasa sisi hatu kwa la kufanya. Sisi tukaenda kambi huko juu. Sasa at least tunaomba serikali atusaidie kwa sababu sisi tumefamiwa kama sio wa Kenya. You see this pile here behind me? These are freshly cut cedar wood. Freshly cut from the Mao Forest complex and they say there's no logging, illegal logging going on. This was freshly cut by the, and, and captured by these guys. Obviously, the perpetrators took off, but illegal logging is still taking part. 
This is the last line of defense in this whole Mao forest complex. And yet, the issues are still out there. Who's to blame? Where is the cut line? What happens next? So many questions, so few answers. Gentlemen, clearly there is a problem in the Mao. Let's not kid ourselves, let's not fool ourselves. And Governor, let me start with you. There's a huge problem in the Mao. The encroachment, the logging is still going on. We can see, we've seen evidence. And people encroaching into the forest itself. There's, there's, a, there's a huge problem. Indeed, there is a problem. Uh, but um, that problem is... Uh, easy to sort out by KFS ensuring that there is no encroachment on the forest, that there is no logging. In fact, we did not see any massive logging really, although you want to say that, but we didn't see any massive logging. We found some little trees, but I'm told uh, those ones were felled by the Nyaya Tea Zone Corporation as they established the tea estates to border, to establish a cut line between the settlements and the forest. Senator, you obviously disagree with this because you, we've seen for ourselves, you know, five years ago, it wasn't like that. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, and it's getting worse. It is indeed. And it is very sad that uh, my dear brother here does not seem to realize this massive destruction of our heritage. I mean, we've come clearly, we've gone through, and it is sad that now he wants to say, oh, these T-zones, those T-zones, there's no way you can, you can put a T-zone to be able to be a boundary between two forests. The forest should be one. What you're doing is that you are encouraging people to encroach. I think there's serious encroachment in the forest. We have seen it. We have, we have flown over it. And I actually commend the work that KWS is doing. Kenya Forest Service is doing at the moment by making sure that they get all these people out of the forest. Governor, there's breaking news today that, um, or rather barring all the T-zones that we we're talking about, the T-zones are going to be barred from all Pusimoru to Mao Forest, all that, an order barring the T-zones. You know the T-zones also include those ones in Bomet, the Nyaya T-zones, are you barring them from there also? <laughs> All the way around the Mao or which Mao? But anyway, that is neither here nor there. All we are saying is the people living in land that, has, that is titled cannot just be wished away. It is the same government. The Kenya government is the one that gave out the title deeds. We've heard it from the people all over where we went. That they have got title deeds and they went to check at uh, the Narok uh, lands registry as to the veracity of those titles. And indeed, they are there. So the question is, uh, the area we went where we saw uh, uh, the destruction of houses was just about uh, 200 meters from the forest. For now, for now. We, that's what we saw. Yes. The rest of the area, we, they are in agreement that those are settlement areas. But then what happens? So where, 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 where is that destruction you're talking about? Let, let me say one Right thing. inside. I am very, very happy with the new directive. In fact, I congratulate Kuriako Tobiko for issuing that directive. Because this government is now moving in the right direction. We cannot use the a state agency to try and uh, abate corruption. The most important thing that we can do, we do away with that T zone completely, we plant trees, then now we can now start talking about this issue of title deeds. It is very clear. These people have encroached into the forest. We went, we saw the beacon, which was there, the entire settlement. These people have been destroying it. We saw, the we, saw the beacon, I mean, the we saw the beacon. We saw the beacon at exactly where the forest ends. No, but, but there's no see, forest no, no, no. now. Jeff, there no, was yes. a forest Jeff, across. That's not true. You saw it. Because what he said when he went and spoke to his tribesmen who were there, or let me put it in a better way, those Kenyans who were there who yeah. happened to be from his tribesmen who happened to speak the same language he speaks. They also speak when, Maasai. When they he, spoke the two languages. When he went and spoke to them. What one of those guys said is that what we know the boundary to be is 15 kilometers away from here. Mm. That is mm. nonsense. Mm. The truth is where the cornfield was, that is a forest. 
I mean, even where we're seated. Look at this human destruction. Everybody, over time, over time. We have to stop this. If you don't stop this, tomorrow, Jeff, you will not find these big uh, logs is there, lying down here. Wait, is there a what will happen is that you will find people cultivating this place. So we must stop there so that we can be able to ensure that we preserve what we have and we improve it for future generations. Correct. I'm told uh, the targeted population is way above 70,000. Is that what we are talking about? Is that what we are saying? What I'm hearing is that uh, it deep behind what he's arguing is a process of moving a population. It is a process of depopulating the place um, with a certain uh, ethnic community. That, in my view, is not how to view an environment. What we need to do is to have a round table with all the stakeholders and agree on where the forest ends. And if the Nara County Council gave out title deeds in 1975 all the way down to, to 20, 20, 2002, then uh, those are Kenyans that are living there. Anybody now who has gone right into the forest, for example, if there is anyone living here, that person should be removed. This is just carelessness on carefully. But they are Indeed. there. There is somebody. But, but have we seen anybody here? We, okay, it's a matter of time. But it's a matter of time. Before you know it, no, no. they'll be planting maize here. Um, the point, that is why we are saying, let there be a cut line just there. There's, there's that, that you cannot cross here. No. It should be clear no. where people do not cross. You disagree? Jeff, you, did you also we, see? We don't, we no, don't, that's don't Did you see jungles. from Bomet as we came across, did you see people moving beyond that cut line? And that's where the problem is. No Why are you refusing to put a cut line here? Jeff, we don't live in the jungle. There's nothing like a cut line. There are clear boundaries, beacons. We are a country which is governed by the rule of law. The constitution is very, very clear. You have a right to own property. But that right is limited to only what is legally, which can be legally bounding. They are you cannot be able to correct, to say that Narrow County Council gave out land, title deeds up to 2002. If Narrow County Council, if some crooks who are maybe councillors or officers of Narrow County Council gave out land, they should be sent to jail. Na Narrow County Council okay. uh, gave the authority. The national government gave out the title deeds. It is the Ministry of Lands, which is a national government function. It is not a county council function. Secondly, what we are saying is uh, the area that is affected by the evictions was area occupied by five group ranges who are actually uh, Maasai group ranges. Those group ranges decided to subdivide the land and sell it. Now they sold it. Now they sold the land to the current settlers. Sure. Now that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem. The problem was extending the boundaries of those lands. Extending the boundaries. One from 300 to 1,200. Another from 500 to 1,500. Extending, if you were to, 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 to get the record straight from, uh, from the Ministry of Lands, it was an extension by the same county council. And remember, the county council extending that land, they were dealing with no, community no, no, no. land. They the are dealing council. with the trust no, land. No, no, no. Don't I have the, the minutes. The county council did not extend that land. That is not true. What it is did. factual is... Those group branches had their land. How would no, what, what Governor Ruto does not even know is that when you look at, for instance, this piece of land here called Rayo, which was only 50 acres, mm -hmm. the title did, when you look at the green card, the number of acres now in the green card, which was illegally done by some, some crooks in the land ministry. So have you arrested no, no, wait, wait. Have you arrested the, the crooks? Is, listen, you know, it, it is sad that Governor Ruto, who was a member of parliament, who was arguing with the Prime Minister about these issues, can now come and say, no, I disregard all the money used by the taxpayers to set up that Nur com uh, Commission to be able to establish that boundary, which we just went to. Yeah, okay? the so what he's saying, he's saying what favors him as a politician. Because he also said that it is a population which is being moved. Let me tell you something. The Maasai's have been very careful. They protected the environment. We will not allow people to encroach into the environment. Even if those people are Maasai, I will not allow them to encroach into that environment. They need to go where they came yes, from. Yes, yes, I have no issue with that. The point we are disputing with uh, my brother here is that uh, the settled areas, the settled areas are titled areas. No, they're not. Now, he is saying that they're some not. crooks in the Ministry of Land changed the green card. That is where the police should have started. 
how did they change the green cards? The green cards are the ones that shows that gives you where to buy land. Mm -hmm. If if we are not going to follow the law, then there is no point of having a country. Okay, then then yes, we become. I want to follow the law to the latter. Yes, yes. I want to follow the law to the latter. Yeah. Even earlier on, when we were talking to some people there, that gentleman Ruto, another Ruto. Mm. Okay, this name Ruto is very interesting in the land. <laughs> another Ruto. This fellow said he came from Sogo. And right now he's very comfortable. He came and built a small small structure. You saw that. Yeah. That's not like a real big house. Mm. It's a small structure. And the only reason why he came there is because he wanted to, to cultivate land. He cut the trees so he wanted to be able to cultivate land to get a place where he can be able to grow. I challenge him to produce his title. He says he doesn't have it. Yes, yes the title. Say, let me finish on yeah. this issue of titles mm. because you keep on uh, pestering, talking about this issue of title. Any Kenyan, Kalenjin, Masai, Kipsikis or whatever tribe you come from, you're a Kenyan. If you claim that you have a title, bring that title, let yes. us follow the due process of the law and find out whether it is legit or not. Yes, yes. There are so many river or title deeds here. Yeah, that's okay. I, I'm simply saying yes. this, eh, that look, uh, Group Ranch were given one huge title and then they sold it to several people. No, they didn't. And for them to get title deed, they have to, uh, to mutate that. So that they can know their own areas. Now, if the if the surveyors do not go there, they cannot get the title deed. So there is one yes. huge title for the for the for the okay. for yes. the me, group ranges, and some of the individuals me, actually were given individual titles. And we are going to get you the title deeds uh, next week. I'll bring them. You you have a look at them. Jeff, let me let me clarify that. Right. Group ranches have members. Okay. It's like a circle. The group ranch does not sell land. The that group branch do. allocate la la land to members. Yes. Members are the ones who sold. If there are any, they are the ones who sold land. Correct. That's, group branch. That's, okay, then. That's okay. Yeah. So, this is very simple. If there is a Ruto there who claims that he bought land from the group branch, mm. he's lying. He never bought land from the group branch. He bought land from an individual. Yeah. If he paid money, there is a process. You have to pay taxes. You have to pay a surveyor. Follow that. Produce the document. And if you don't have it? If you don't have it, then you're illegal. You okay. go back to where Gentlemen, you came from. Is there a solution to all this? Or are we running around in circles and we're not going to get anywhere? Governor, is there a solution? There is a solution. There's, as the solution is uh, a public participatory process of uh, getting all the information right and indicating exactly which area is illegal. And then a process of relocation starts. Because you don't just come and start burning houses without giving any notice. You've got to say, Jeff, you are on the wrong uh, area, and these are the clear facts. And this can be communicated even through the administration and all the other people. Once that communication is done, then a solution is sought. If there are people who are mistakenly given title deeds for whatever reasons, and they were issued by the Ministry of Lands, those people can be relocated to other lands. Senator. But you cannot just arrive one day and brutalize people. You cannot, you cannot do that. And you cannot use inflammatory language. And you cannot use the might of government to hammer on innocent local Kenyans. Jeff, the solution is very simple. This government is in the right track. Kiriako Tobiko today issued a directive, no planting that tea, remove all those people. You cannot separate two forests with a tea zone. That's number one. Let's go to number two. There are those reports. There's no point of using public resources. Right now, most people have not even been paid. C civil servants have not been paid because the government does have, doesn't have money. So why are you going to get that money to carry out another public participation? You've already done the new report. You also did another Olentutu report. And also there's all, there was another report, a third report which was done. So what is there is, it is very clear. We went to the boundary. That, those beacons are very clear. Follow the beacon. Anyone who is, a, who is beyond that beacon, you go. You get out. At the same time, the Very same simple. the same government that planted the T zones, that yes. planted the boundary, is yes. the same government now that turns around and, and is barring the same boundary. What does that you mean? See, uh, let me tell you. Earlier on, I'd ask uh, 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 former Governor Ruto, who owns these T zones? And I suggested to him that I'm going to move a motion on Tuesday, give notice in the Senate of barring those T zones. Then, lucky enough, Kiriya Kotobiko moved ahead. That is like God is talking to all of us. We want to know who is benefiting from those T-zones. That's number one. If it is the Kenyan public which, which is benefiting from those T-zones, that is money which we are not feeling. It, for us to be able, let us use the profits 
to replant trees yes. in the entire area. We do away with all those tea zones completely. So that it is very clear. Because you cannot, because in my thinking, I, I'm, I'm actually, I can actually say that there are few bourgeoisies, a few big shots in government who are benefiting from that tea zone. And today is when we'll get to know who is actually benefiting from that tizo? That is uh, speculative uh, issues. Uh, yeah, tizo is well known that it is a, uh, is a, it's a corporation of Kenya government. Now, how they account, there must be procedures of accounting. And I don't think that is our issue right now. No, it is my the issue. issue. The issue right it now is, is issue. first is of all, issue. the tizo. Let me just it finish. It is my issue because it is a narrow county. It is affecting the environment of narrow county. And more so, I sit in the Public Account and Investment Committee. So and I'm going to follow up to find out and you the do not know of that now it is on who it's benefiting. So it is and, my and issue. And you don't know. Okay. Up to now it you don't know. It is my issue. That is a, okay? it's a corporation. I know it's a state corporation. Yeah. But now I'm so not very happy that the government has done what? Has moved in the right direction. And that is not, able to I don't think that is our topic board today. Board. Gentlemen. The, the, the question here is, now it is as a corporation has succeeded in blocking any encroachment on land, no, on, on forests. You've seen it in Bomet, and it is the same thing in Nakuru, the same thing around Kericho, the same thing would have happened here and, and, and should be able to happen. Okay. Now, as to the, the arguments about uh, the, the, the county forest and the national government forest, that's a matter that is not ours. That is a matter that they can sort out between the, those two levels of government. Our issue is the people who have been settled whether correctly or incorrectly, but settled by government offices uh, in Narok, yeah? no. cannot be no. uh, harassed. And those who will not go there, if there is anyone legally in there, if there is anyone inside the forest, that is a, a criminal. But, no, but uh, inside but, but, what was then forest? Uh, yeah. When? Inside what was then forest? You see, there are two issues that you would need to understand: that uh, the whole of uh, of that area. All the way from Mulot up to this area was wooded land. It was no, wooded land. Unlike all the, way, all the way name from the Mulot. Blocks. Uh, name the blocks. There is a Transmara block, yes. which is intact. We have no issue with it. Yes. We may have issues with it, but not so much. Yeah. What is happening now in the Mao for Masai Mao block is this T-zone. If it is not stopped, and I'm glad, I, I want to repeat that again, I'm glad that Kiria Kotobuko has actually issued the direction to stop it. If it is not stopped, it will eat up over 46,000 hectares of the forest. That is what is happening. That's 100,000. That is the yes. Okay, uh, finally. That is a statement. Finally, uh, Governor, finally, uh, finally. Yeah. Is there hope? There is definitely hope. If uh, a discussion is done, and the brutalization that we are witnessing no is stopped. And uh, the inflammatory statements that we are receiving from people like uh, Ledam, uh, if those are torn down and then uh, a clear discussion roundtable is done involving the people, it can be guided properly to save uh, the environment. It has succeeded on the, on the Nakuruzan in Kuresoi. That has succeeded. People were relocated. It's possible to relocate people if uh, where those people have, uh, have crossed the border. But um, you do that with uh, inflicting minimum human suffering. Yes. Senator. If, uh, if you leave it to people like uh, uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, then there's no hope. Hope is only there. If all of us remember that we are in this world for a very short time and we must preserve this. By killing children? One. What he's saying. By burning houses? What he's saying is not even factual. The truth is, the truth is, these people who have encroached into this forest, they, they started moving out last October. In fact, if it wasn't for more comment and his other colleagues who came here and started making noise, all these people would have just gone. These people Where's are moving on a daily basis. So this issue of houses being burned, okay? When you find a place which is completely empty, just, you know, burn that house, it's empty. Mm. You empty. know, let that earth go back, it will fertilize the soil. Oh. Plant a tree there. No one has been hurt. There is no child is that, is that is that no, 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 is that the finish. law? Let me finish. Is that I gave you time to is talk. Is that the law on eviction? I gave you The law on eviction is this. You have no right coming to encroach into the, and, and a water catchment. You in Bomet do not have water. You have no water now in Bomet. Your rivers are Who drying. Who told you? Mao and the Masai, uh, Masai Mara River is drying up. 
right now. Go and see crocodiles dying. Go and see hippos dying. Yet this country de depend on that tourism dollar. We should have we been have there to, to see. We have to be honest with each other. If there the is moment great we all over the country, honest, but the point, governor, listen. The moment we become honest with each other, listen, and we are ready to put our political career on the line to save this ecosystem, is the day we will have hope in this country. Let me tell you, the issue. No one is arguing about whether we should conserve more or we shouldn't. The question is how. Simple. You don't create they a situation in which you create enmity between the inhabitants and the trees. Then there will be a backlash. All you need to do is to deal with the environment and save it, like we've done in the rest of Mao. Why, uh, why is it that there is only a problem on this side? Let me tell you. Why, why is there part, no problem on the other side? You. This part, the reason why this part is good, because there is not a single, the Maasai have, have actually stood firm, and they have not allowed any kids to be stood, stood, stood firm one, how? Wait, let me finish. This issue of people coming from uh, Bomet, Kericho, they are the ones who are now coming in, into this area of Sierra Leone, Ngoben, they are the ones who are getting into the forest. We are in Gareta right now. The Maasai are here. You can, all you can hear in the background are cows enjoying. Uh, okay? Who, who fell all this And then piece? the problem is this. Who, who, who did all this destruction? I can uh, see a lot of destruction. Uh, this destruction was done by your people here when they from were coming here. When? From where? From here, Ngoben here. This is, this is Maasai land. Yeah, but the other one, I'm yeah. glad you said this is This is areas this occupied is by the Maasai. Yes, Maasai land. Then yeah. get out. We have no business coming here. We don't here. live here. We don't <laughs> live here. Are you? This is never going to end, gentlemen. This area, yes. this area, yes. this area yes. Yes. by saying this. Yes. The truth is, first of all, this uh, the Maasai leadership currently. They are all in support of Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta and Kiriako Tobiko and Raila Molo Odinga for staying firm and making sure that we conserve this environment. The next course of action now, is that if these people don't move out, we will tell the Maasai to move in and start planting trees. You listen to that? Well, you know, planting trees is important. Planting trees is important, yes. but what does he actually say? I just said, we to start planting trees. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We kept our promise. We did. From the bench, yes. right. we came to the log. Yes. And this con conversation continues. Yes. We'll have to continue it, gentlemen. And right. I'm glad you both, as despairing as your views are, at least you can continue talking. It's democracy. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.